Hey, my name is Kyra and I have the opportunity to serve here at Rightway on a worship team. Before we head to the message, I want to take a moment and say thank you for watching. No matter where you're watching from, we're believing that this message is going to build your faith and encourage you. Before we start, take a moment and subscribe. Get something to take notes and let's jump into the message. Yeah, let's move. Okay, turn to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Uh, we're going to look at verse 6. Then we're going to look at verse 14 through 15, and then we're going to look at John 10 and 10, uh, and John 10 and 10, we'll look at that from the Amplified Classic Bible. Remember, I'm asking you to bring notebooks, or if you're using your phone, however uh, best way that you can take notes, you're listening for the in-between, you can always go back. I'm encouraging everybody to go back and listen to the message again, because faith cometh how? By hearing and and hearing, which means you got to hear it more than one time. Amen. Faith does not come by what you've heard. Faith comes by hearing. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. So uh, we're in a series. We, we kind of touched it last week, but we didn't get started. Uh, but we're going to start on it today. And I'm so excited about this series. It was on 713 uh, that I got a prophetic word from the Lord. He said, no more common, only exceptional. And so we have this, day, and, and let me pause for a moment. I got to ask you all to forgive me. Um, I got word from my staff that, that you were not the problem, but I was the problem because I taught y'all two ways to step up. And so uh, the, the popcorn was my fault, right? And so it, we're supposed to stand up on the second step up. I see, I see some of y'all talking about, yeah, you was wrong. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. I told you that whenever I make a mistake, I'm, I'm humble enough to stand before you. So I'm asking you for your forgiveness. Will you forgive me? All right, so you can't do this no more. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah see, that's over with now. You know, forgave me. So it's step up, and then we stand up on the second step up, and then we say, oh, okay, 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 okay. You ain't, you ain't got to. I got it. I got it. You ain't got, you know what I'm saying? Don't take the, take the, take the blade out my side. I got it. <laughs> I'm just joking. It's no more common, only exceptional. So we, we got that. Now, for those of you that are here for the first time, we got this little, this, what do you call that? That's a, a prophetic gesture, but you would call something like that a state, not a statement. Give me something a little fancier. A chant, a chant. I like that chant. Big thank you for the chant. The chant, we say step up. I say step up. You say step up. I say step up. You stand up and say step up, right? And then I say, what are we saying? We say no more common, only exceptional. Got it. All right. So step up. Step up. Step up. Step up. What are we saying? No more All right. Y'all got it. Amen. That was my fault. Okay. That was that was all my fault because I mean y'all were perfect then. So so that's what we're that's what we're working with. We're working. We're gonna work through this series uh, on this step up. No more exceptional. God is calling right way. Now this with this series, we're doing a couple of things. One of the things that I believe God is doing, He is He is developing the culture uh, of the church, the look of His church, uh, sort of the brand of how He wants His. Now let, let's not let's not take that word and put it way out there. But I believe God is wanting us to see through this series. One thing He's wanting us to see is how His church, from His perspective, was always supposed to be clothed. Come on, say clothed. Re remember in, in, in Exodus, I mean not in Exodus, excuse me, in Genesis, because Adam and Eve ate from the tree, they were found naked, so they were not, watch this, oh God, that is so good. So they, would, they, they lost their clothing, right, which would have been the image of how God saw them, so they saw themselves differently and they tried to clothe themselves in a way that God did not want them clothed. So right there in the garden, God sacrificed to reclothe them because that was a way that he always wanted his church to look. They would always be naked before him but clothed differently before people. And we got to get the right clothing back. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Y'all hear that? So, so, so now, this is, this is going to be, our, our subtitle is The Exceptional Life. The Exceptional Life. Uh, our, I, I, you know, the whole time I saw that, I was looking at you the whole time. Because last week, I blamed you for popcorning, and you were, I mean, you was right on it. And, and I, I saw you like, like, Pastor got it wrong. So, I apologize, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, uh. Our message focus is an above average living inside out. 
an above average living inside out. So now let's look at our foundational scriptures, Deuteronomy. This is only part one. We said last week was introduction. This is really introduction, and we're going we gonna to get into it. Y'all ready for this word on today? Amen. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6, verses 14 through 15, and then when we get to John 10 and 10, we're going to read that out of the Amplified Bible. Are you ready? All right, here it is. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 says, read with me, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Come on, somebody say, I'm special. Yeah, now verse 14 says, Thou art, read with me, thou art blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that, that hate thee. <laughs> Go to John 10 and 10. Come on, let's keep moving. John 10 and 10. Let's keep moving. Y'all ready? All right. Amplify Bible. Uh, 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 Bible readers, come on. Let's read together. Only to... What is the thief's mission? What is the mission of a thief? Jesus said, read, I am come that they may have and enjoy life and have it abundantly... To the full until it what? That sounds like an exceptional life, don't it? Now watch this. Here's my opening statement. Jesus came to restore a family and establish a kingdom of people who lived a life with a mark of greatness on them because their lives were reflected, their lives were a reflection of, of the God that they served. Their lives were a reflection reflection of the God. Now I want you to I want you to lean into that part of that this opening statement that our lives are a reflection of the God that we serve. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, it's going to be hard to get out of this opening statement because we can trace that from Old Testament to New Testament. Remember when God sent those spies into Jericho and Rahab figured out who they was? And she said, oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know who y'all are, and I know what y'all got. Y'all not here. Y'all not just here for a reason. Y'all, something about to happen. Something about to happen. And, and I heard about how y'all God sticks up for y'all and how y'all God defends for y'all. And I know something is about to happen and I don't want y'all to leave me out. It, oftentimes in the Old Testament, not oftentimes, every time in the Old Testament, the children of Israel would rebel and, and get in disobedience and move from up under the covering of God. And they would see doom and destruction. They would fall into the hands of the Philistines, of the Gergeshites. You know, nations would come against them and defeat them. The moment they repented and got back up under the covering of God, God immediately blessed them. God immediately, why, well, I wouldn't have to, we don't have to say God did it. The, the, oh, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. The covering, listen, it, God didn't have to do it. It was always there. They just had to get back up under the covering to see what the covering provided. Woo, I'm excited. You like, calm down, boy. And so they only saw this type of stuff when they got from up on. See, 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 the umbrella don't stop the rain. It just protects you from getting wet. Y'all don't hit me up in here. Woo. Okay, calm down, boy. You're getting too excited. But if you was to get from up under the umbrella, you're going to get wet. Where, where, where the wetness is not, it's not necessarily the rain fault because the rain is falling. But God has provided something to keep you from getting wet. You just got to stay. Come on, say stay up under grace. And watch this, not only would God restore them, not only would they see, we can say God, but because of his sovereignty, it was always there. Once they got back up under that grace, grace, wow, I like that. I see it like this. Grace was always flowing. 
Grace was always flowing healing, always flowing restoration, always flowing supply. And as long as they were under grace, they always saw healing. They always saw supply. It, it was an ever flow. It was an ever flow. They got from up under it, and, and because they got from up under it, it wasn't that the flow stopped. They wasn't where the flow was moving. They get back up under the flow, and they, can't, they see back in their lives immediately what they were missing out on from not being under the flow. It wasn't God stopping and starting. God was a, he said that you are a holy people and you are chosen to me. Are you listening to me? Now, not only did they get back into the flow, God would turn around and he, he said, now listen, they my children to those other nations. He would whoop them for simply messing with his people. He said, ain't nobody telling you to touch them. And since you did, I'll judge those nations that have the nerve to put their hands on you. Come on, now think about it, think about it. You know, the teacher has a right to discipline your child to, to own it. They start putting your hands on your child. Now you got a problem with me because that's my job. Am I right about it? So that's how God was to those other nations. You, I didn't give you the right to touch them like that. Well, God, they disobeyed you. He's like, right, they disobeyed me. So, watch this. Ooh, this is so good. I'm, I'm, I'm still in my opening statement. Okay. Cause so, so, we're supposed to be a reflection of the God that we serve. Every, it seems like every other religion, belief, and I use that word religion means our belief because everybody is religious in some way. You have some form of belief. I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. Well, you know spiritual is a religion founded by two females, so you better be careful with that word, too, with your spiritual self. <laughs> so, uh, the, as a matter of fact, the Bible says true religion and undefiled is to keep yourself from evil and visit the widows and their afflictions. That's over in the book of Hebrews, so there is a true religion. or We can be truly religious, right? And, and so, I don't want to get into that, but we're so every religion is reflecting, God, reflecting their God, oftentimes except Christians. You don't find hardly any other beliefs, belief, believers that believe in something, because if you're a Muslim, you believe in, in, uh, in Muhammad and Allah. You don't find them going against the book that was given them. They don't sit around and say, man wrote that. You don't hear, well, of course, they know, they, well, the, 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 the history says that Muhammad got it from an angel, Right? And, and, and that he wrote it, right? That he's that prophet that God chose to wrote. You don't find no Muslim arguing against that, but you find Christian after Christian after Christian after Christian after Christian arguing against the book that was given them. Like, like you chose to say, okay, I'm going to believe you, God. I'm going to come up under your statutes, but I question. Well, don't come up under it if you're going to question it. I'm not saying if you have question about it, but you question. Like, like, like if Jesus was here now, will we still get married? Yeah, you still will get married. Like, like yeah, yeah, you still can't lie. Right, and if you look at all those other religions, you can by looking at them. You remember Rahab? She, she, they didn't. They were spies. She looked at them and said, "Oh, them some God people right there, and God must be about to do something." Well, why aren't people looking at us and recognizing you? You God people. So, see, see, if you living all your life around your friends and they ain't never saying, "It's something about you." It's just some. Something about you, you changing right before my eyes. Well, this is the same shirt I had on last week, so what change are they talking about? I mean, this dress ain't new, you get what I'm saying? So what change are you talking about? Everything is reflecting their God. You, can, you know the Buddhist when you see them most of the time. You know the Muslim when you see them most of the time. You Listen, you even know those spiritual people. They, they start putting rocks over 9 and 12, 13 different rings in their ears, their nose. They start reflecting the God that they serve. Everybody but us. I still cuss you out if you make me mad enough. Everybody but us. And God is saying, when is my bride going to reflect me? When is she going to dress herself the way that I want her to be dressed? Come on, say exceptional. Now, now watch this. In reflecting God, this family, the church, would be an exceptional group of people who would demonstrate God's ideal of what living life should be and look like. Now, let's talk about step up. Here's my definition for this word, step up. Say step up. 
Here's my definition. Here's what this word step up means. This word step up, it means to scale up. It's a continual striving of being one's best self. It's being at best in all things. Come on, say all things. It, it is you being at your best. I'm going to show you this. this. This step up is in Scripture. I'm not, this ain't nothing I just made up. The Bible, is t- the Bible has commanded the church to step up. Now, he can command us, the church, his bride, which you and I are part of, to step up because he's given us everything that we need, watch this, so that we can step in to to step up. We've been abundantly supplied with all things in order to live out this mandate of stepping up. Now, here, here, this, we said no more common. So what are we saying when we, let's define this word common. This word common means ordinary. It means regular, standard. It means general. Are you listening to me? That, that's why all the renovations you see, it was time anyway. To, uh, been in this building over 10 years. It was time to change some stuff up. Still believe in God for what we need left to get our chairs. Uh, we had an anonymous giver. A pastor came by here, uh, had met with our production department. He said, man, I see what y'all doing online. Just look good. Y'all, I mean, compliment he gave me just blew me so he said I got to bring my team down here so he brought his team down here to see the church hung out with Joe and some of the production people looking at the lights and screens asking questions our sound and all that type of stuff the guy came back again and brought a ten thousand dollar check now this is what he said he's this is what he said he say he say I'm on the outside he say and and I see what God is doing in this church he say I feel for your members that don't see it this is an outside person looking in. He said, I feel for your members that don't. He said, I see it, and I'm not going to allow my church to miss out on it. He's, he was talking about the chick because he knew I won't. I said, last, he was asking me about the renovation. I told him, I said, he said, you renovating and y'all building at the same time? I said, well, yeah, the Lord said. He said, well, man, that's, that is outstanding. So, I, you know, I showed him what we did. He said, man. And so I told him about the chairs, and he came back. He said, well, I'm, here, here go $10,000. Now, I say this to you all all the time, and I, you know, I'm a transparent pastor. I don't mind sharing stuff with you because this is your church too, right? But, but I, I often wonder, do you see it? Because you can be coming to a place so much that you just become common with the place. So there is no expectation of exceptional because you kind of experience it all the time. So it just becomes common to you. Like church becomes your checkoff. And not a place where you really come expecting God to do, expecting God to say. And you're praying that, God, I'm asking you to put a word in my man of God mouth for me today. But it's just common. So we're not just talking about common and and, and exceptional in our living and and exceptional in look. We're talking about being exceptional in our expectation of God to do. Hey, glory to God. Now, this this word, here's my Holy Spirit definition of this word common. Uh, It was just enough, nothing more to say it's done or you did it. I said, well, God, what do you mean when you, he said, well, when, when a common believer is, is a believer that would do just enough, nothing more to say it's done or you did it. Just enough to say it's done or you did it. Well, I did what you told me to do. Not, nothing more for the boss. Just, if they just ask you to take out the trash, all you do is just using a very, very simplistic thing is take out the trash. But you saw that trash around the bin that should have been inside and you ain't going to pick that up because all you was told to do was take out the trash. So it don't matter the trash that was around that you saw it to pick it up. Just, just enough. I mean, just because that, that, that's all they pay me for. And you never thought to think that you are supposed to be living an exceptional life. And if every environment that you come around and everything you touch is not supposed to be the same after leaving your presence. But you decide to leave it common. You walk through your church and you see a piece of paper on the floor. Don't mean nothing to you. It's paper on the floor. They got ushers. They'll pick that up. Never thought that it's your church that you're sowing into. So let me get that up because pastors say we're exceptional. We don't want that on the floor. We don't want nobody to see that. Ooh, he get quiet. We talk. Okay, come on. So let me talk. I got let me let me talk about. I got some stuff I want to add to this message because this message is actually centered on redemption. Come on, say redemption. You, you, we, we, we got to grow up. We got to grow past he died, didn't he die. There's so much more that we're missing out on that we don't understand. Come on, say redemption. Now, listen, listen. Lean in. I'm going to take you to Bible college real quick. I need you to lean in and listen because you got to get some understanding. Jesus not only saved us, he redeemed us. 
As a matter of fact, salvation was not about getting you to heaven. You want to die? You want to go to heaven? Yes and no. And I'm, I'm saying no in the uses of the word heaven. Because earth will actually, in the new heaven and earth, earth will become a part of heaven. It'll be three floors. First floor, second floor, third floor. All of it will be heaven. The first floor of heaven would be called earth. The second floor of heaven would be called New Jerusalem. The third floor of heaven would be called heaven, God's throne. It'll be one full house with three floors. Are you listening to me? So when we, when we say we want to go to heaven, what we're really saying is we want everlasting life with the Father, not to go to heaven. Because you'll only go up there temporarily till he renovate earth. Then when he renovate earth for you, he change all the outlets and all that kind of stuff like that. Now, because that's often what happens when they renovate a whole house, they move you. They move the living people out of the house. And then after the house is renovated, they put the living people back in the house. So it's not like God didn't create earth to be destroyed. So earth ain't going to be hell where everything is burning. Okay, okay, okay. So let me just go with this redemption part because that's a whole nother come LDBI. LDBI. I don't do a whole bunch of tests and we do a lot of teaching in our two-hour class and I promise you it'll get your mind right because we so misunderstood. Everybody ready to go to heaven and, and he created, he put man where he wanted man to be. He put man, he put man, he, the Bible says, Isaiah says he created earth to be inhabited, not to be destroyed. Amen. Sin messed heaven up. Sin messed earth up. Amen. All right. Okay. 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 All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's get back over here. So it's a message of redemption. So Jesus not only saved us, he redeemed us. The putting on of flesh, lean in, the putting on of flesh, taking on of sin, the 40 day wilderness. The substitutionary works that Jesus did, the beatings that he took, the physical. When I say he, I'm talking about the body. Don't see that being done to Jesus. See that being done to the body. Come on, say to the body. It, it never, it never, it never hit God because God is a spirit. It had to be done back to the body because it was the body that ate from the tree. Are you listening to me? And so let me say this again. The putting on of flesh taking on of sin, the 40-day wilderness, the substitutionary works that that body did that you are not supposed to do. There are some substitutionary works that God did with that body that you and I were not supposed to do because we couldn't do it, and that body had to do it. Okay? Um, the beatings, the physical humili humiliation of nakedness. When Jesus hung on the cross, he was stripped naked. Remember when they ate, their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked. So God had to get in about it to take that nakedness back that was taken away. The humiliation, but it was a humiliation of nakedness because Adam and Eve, when they became naked, they were humiliated at the sight of nakedness. So Jesus, God had to get in about it to take that humiliation back that came as a result of them eating. Are you listening to me? Y'all got that? All right. So the betrayal. Because Adam and Eve, part of eating the tree was a form of betrayal. It was, a, it was choosing to do life without God. That's betrayal. For the fulfilling of the law, all 660 plus laws that Jesus fulfilled. Uh, the, the carrying the tree. The carrying the tree, right? Uh, uh, and then nailing that body back to the tree. Or what we now call the cross. The death. The burial. Well, all, listen, for payment. All that, 40 days, beating, naked humiliation, all of that, watch this, was what was needed for payment. That's why you and I couldn't do it. We wouldn't, la we wouldn't have last passed. Pick one. Pick one. You just pick one. You wouldn't have last passed it. But all of that had to be done, and I probably left some out. That's just a few. All of that had to be done for payment. So the death, the cross, was for, come on, it was for, come on, Bible students, it was for, it was for payment. But watch this, though. The resurrection was for providence, promise, payout, and position. 
It wasn't just to get us eternally existing with the Father. It also had payout involved in it. That's why he had to get back up. Come on, come on, church. Boy, that ain't hard to understand. If, if, yo, if yo, a wise man leave it then in. Okay, okay. And an inheritance in the simplest term, I just used the two words, is a. Come on. It's a come. Who said that? It's a payout. Come on. An inheritance is a. Watch this. I'm going to see if five people can shout. And you can only get that payout when somebody die. die. And when they die, watch this now. The, the policy now resurrects. Yeah. One part of the person goes down. The other the part. Oh, my God. Y'all listening to me. So the resurrection was for payout. And we have been taught about payout. We've been taught struggling, trying to make it, not understanding that there's a payout to remove the struggle. It was for payout. It was for providence. The resurrection was about position. I took all that on me on the payment. I got on the cross for payment. So when I get back up, you can get back in your position. And we hung up on the pavement, on the pavement. None of you, come on, come on, think about this. Think where ignorance and, and incomplete teaching leave us. It, it leaves you in line downtown, still in line after you have paid for your speeding ticket. That's where I left you. Ticket paid. You pay the ticket. If the ticket paid, that means that you are remitted. You, you fulfill that law. God. God. You fulfill. In other words, that law cannot do anything against you if a law enforcer shows up. Because it was paid. He can't even bring it up. I see you got a ticket. Okay, and it's been paid. Your, your response is it's been paid. So you start talking resurrection. They start talking payment. You start talking resurrection. That was already paid for, officer. What are we talking about that for? But, but, but bad teaching, watch this, talks about paying the ticket and then turns around and put us right back in line as if there's still something to pay when you should be finding out what's the payout now. I'm preaching good to myself today. That's why I say I want everything that belongs to me. You should want everything that belongs to you. And any other Christian talk against it, you say it ain't my fault that you don't understand. Watch this now. Watch this. This word redemption, or the root word is redeem. We're just dealing with words because when you understand the word, it means to be bought back, brought back, and put back in one's original position. We be shouting, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Well, what does that mean? I'm, I've been put back in position. I, watch this. I've not only been put back, I've been bought back. The Bible says you've been bought with a price. See, there's the difference. Yes, Lord. There's a difference between a purchase and a lease. You ain't been leased, you've been purchased. Watch it. And God decided in his purchasing that he want to put some new rims on you. <laughs> oh, God. That he, he didn't want you to look the same way and stay the same way you look when he bought you. Now that you his property, he wants to fix you up because he wants to use you to show him off. But when you just lease something, you can you got to turn it back in. You can't, you can't, you can't tint the windows because you want to ride low. Huh? You can't take the sound system out, put another sound system in just because you rented the car for the weekend. If it ain't got no lows, it ain't got no lows. You can't touch it because it's been leased. 
But man, when you buy a car, you be like, well, just don't worry about it. Car. You want to add rims? No, I'm going to put my own on it. Because now, now that it's under my control, I have the right to redeem it how I want to. This word redeemed or redemption means vindication. Out of y'all sleep. And what God is doing, whoa, oh, ha, 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 I'm prophesying now. And God is about to get sin back for what it did to your life. God going to vindicate you. Oh, my God, I don't think y'all caught that. Listen, God is about to get sin back for what sin did to your life. In other words, God say, if sin made you sick, I come as a healer. If sin had you confused, I come as peace. If sin had you broke, I come as a provider. God say, I'm your vindicator. <laughs> My God from heaven. We've been praying the wrong way. God, if you, if you don't do anything else, God say, I'm a vindicator. What you mean if I don't do nothing else? I didn't purchase you to leave you like you are. I dare you to raise your hand and say, vindicate me, Lord. Vindicate me, Lord. And my time is up. Give God a hand clap of praise. I, we'll pick it up next week. God, I thank you. I thank you that I'm redeemed, God. Thank you that I've been bought with a price. Oh, Lord, and you're vindicating me, Father. You're making all things new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm on a mission to teach you the completeness of God. Hallelujah. He got up, you supposed to get up too. All right, well, I'm done. I'm stopped right there. Thank you so much for watching. We pray that you're leaving encouraged. We also want to thank the amazing partners and givers of Rightway. It's because of your generosity that the vision of Rightway that God has given our amazing pastors is made possible. If you'd like to partner with us and get your seed into good ground, visit rightwayccc.org forward slash give. Don't forget, like and subscribe, follow us on our socials, and join us live on Sunday mornings at 8.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. See you soon.